All right, I I'm gonna you. start. Yep. Everyone's good. The yep. tongue fucking give me a goddamn. Did <laughs> you not see it coming? <laughs> All right, let's start this thing. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the 2020 Giving Tournament. Uh, thank you everyone who uh, contributed to the idea and who donated Bitcoin and who's participating. Uh, this is really looking like it's gonna be pretty awesome. So um, we did the draft yesterday. Now let's take a look at what everybody decided uh, for the team, for who they're gonna host and where everybody's gonna go. So uh, first things first, we'll take a look at Cess. So we'll just start there. Um, that goes to uh, Keith's team, first of all, to host. And um, I guess we should announce the teams. So uh, the team names. So that's, uh, we got Tundra's team is just the Tundras. That makes sense. How and then you? Keith's team is uh, Team Clean Sweep. Uh, so Team so Clean team. Sweep hosts uh, Cess. And on Cess, we got for Keith's team, that's Phoenix and Spider Pig versus Marcus and Bianca. Ooh, looks like we nailed a prediction. All right, Ooh. so Tundar, you pretty much had this team picked out, Marcus and Bianca, right away. So what makes you so confident that they're going to be a good good team here? Um, well, what I've done here is I've brought Marcus in to a map where I know he's got that map down on, on lock. His confidence on that map to carry out a victory is beyond most people in the, in the whole lot of community here. And uh, having Bianca there, someone who actually enjoys the map, is just going to make the, the tournament a lot more exciting and interesting for everyone. Bianca enjoys this map? Oh, that is news to me. Okay, here we go. Now, Keith, Phoenix and Spider Pig. These aren't players that I think most would expect to be Cess players. Uh, I don't think they like the maps personally, but why did you choose to put them here? Why did they end up here? Well, all will be revealed and all will be clear as we go further on into the level reveals. But um, Phoenix uh, is versatile. Uh, he he knows Cess. I mean, everybody knows Cess. Uh, you don't have to like Cess to know Cess. And um, Spider Pig is one of those people. He was definitely not interested in doing um, that. But once we explain the logic of it all and the idea that Cess is easily winnable for the underdogs, um, I think that we've got ourselves a real chance to. Uh, bring home our team clean sweep name and make it reality. So looking at the teams now, are both captains confident that this is going to be a win for their teams? Um, I'll go first. Yeah, I'm absolutely confident. And whether or not they win, I definitely think everyone here is going to enjoy the game. But yeah, no, I think our, our chances are very good and looking strong. Our uh, our team predictions were spot on with this with this choice. We predicted this uh, matchup and allying of of the two. So we uh, we think we're going to do this here for sure too. Okay, great. I think uh, that both teams have some strong expectations for Cess. We'll see how that works out. Leaf. Uh, All right. Ahead. Yeah. So up next is Four Walls. Um, once again, the host goes to Team Clean Sweep, and that's Arbrim and Jimmy versus Spyro and Mammy. Guys, looks like we just nailed another prediction. So, Keith, obviously, as you've already said, and I watched your drafting process quite uh, extensively, do you think that Four Walls has gone exactly as you planned it to, of course? Yes, 100%. Do you want to elaborate on that for the people who didn't see that planning? Um, I mean, I don't know how much I want to divulge because there's still time for these guys to train up and whatnot, but... You know, we know we know Spyro is addicted to um, to uh, four walls, so we knew Spyro was going to be on it, and he's good at four walls. And we thought at first it was going to be Resurrection and Spyro, but then we had a feeling that it could be Mammy too, and we saw Spyro and Mammy allying on the game results, so we had a feeling that those were going to be the two people. So we chose Arbum and Jimmy because they're brothers, and they have synergy because of that, and... We did hosting priority for this one because we think that uh, we've got a better shot at beating uh, Spyro and Mammy when Spyro's not blue. <laughs> so, of course, Tunda, you saw you saw the brothers get picked up by the by Team Clean Sweep in the draft. Yeah. Are you surprised to see them being fielded together? No, that's exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, I can't remember what the predictions were. I threw them together at last minute, but that 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 looks like a, a perfect team for Spyro and Mammy to get in there and. This should be a really entertaining match to watch. Um, I think sure. both teams are, sh are strong. 
it's going to be hard to predict, but I do still think that Spyro and Mami are going to be able to give it their all, even with you know the host going over to the brothers, which just makes it all the more interesting. Excellent. And so, so you, I would say both captains are satisfied with how Four Walls has played out then. Absolutely. Sure. Excellent. Okay, so we'll be moving on to Pressure Point. I think this is one of the more highly anticipated games. Uh, Leaf, take it away. All right, so the host goes to Tundras, the Tundras. Uh, we lo we're looking at Spinifix and Carbine versus Keith and Loot Hill. Hey. So, looks like, we, looks like we predicted another team, but it didn't go the way we wanted. Exactly. So, of course, I was part. Of, I was watching your planning process, and of course, uh, you banked on getting the host for this. So. Do you regret not planning for failure a little bit more when it comes to no. this draft? Because now you two are going to be playing on a, on a much oh. higher ping. Well, I won't be playing on a much higher ping, but uh, Loot Hill may. So we're going to take a look and see which ping is better for Carbine or Spinifix, and then we'll pick that one um, for Loot Hill. But uh, yeah, we were definitely hoping that it was going to be either me or Loot Hill, because then uh, Tunder would have had to pick uh, one of us to host with Loot Hill getting better ping. So this is going to be a little bit more of a blow to us, but I think Loot Hill and I have proven uh, in the past that we are a dynamic duo on PP, so we're not too worried. Just didn't go according to plan. We thought we were going to get that hosting there for that. Right, Tanda, um, I wouldn't be doing very good interview questions if I didn't ask this. Uh, Spinifix and Carbine, they're both very good players, but they have a bit of a reputation for winding each other up. <laughs> Do you think they'll be able to put that aside to work together for this victory? Or do you I think the... It's going to make the best entertaining <laughs> match of our tournament. And that's exactly why I was so keen to have them together rather than splitting them off. Because that, that dynamic... Oh, absolutely. I mean, you've got to also appreciate, you know, behind the scenes, it, they, they know that they're just winding each other up. Yeah. Um, and it is just a front. But um, I do think that they are going to enjoy the banter as they as they play that map i will say in regards to this map i am a little excited about not predicting nissi being on this map now that is interesting so you, so you were expecting them to field nissi for this i certainly was i thought it was going to be keith but i wasn't seeing loot hill being on on pp so that's a surprise so it's really an interesting game are you feeling nervous at all, Tandar? Because, of course, Keith52 and Loot Hill are one of the pressure point teams that are really well known for their teamwork synergy. Do you think they might be able to break Spinifix and Carbine off of the back of that skill? Um, we'll have to see. Um, you've got to appreciate I've got two very quick players here who will be hosting the game on PP. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching the game, and I will be very surprised if they were to break down either Spin or Carbine in this matchup. Um, but of course, if they've got the synergy and of course they're smart enough, then anything can happen on PP, and that's why we love that map. Which is so I've got to, which is I've got to be fair and shoot the question your way, Keith. As Tundar's already alluded to, Spinifix and Carbine both very fast players. Are you nervous going up against players this quick? Uh, very fast players. I mean, I would say I'm intrigued because I've got plans. We 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 definitely have plans for our PP strategy. Um, you know, not, nothing terrible, nothing like awful or, or rude, but we've got ideas on how to handle. We we were prepared for any team, but we yet again successfully predicted another team. So right now we're three for three on predictions, which is pretty cool. Excellent. Well, that's it for me. I'll pass it back to the hosts. All right. So next up is uh, the one versus one, the only one versus one in the tournament at Yggdrasil. I think this is probably the hardest um, map to predict for the team. So... Uh, with that, Leaf, can we get the announcement, please? Absolutely. Yeah, so Yggdrasil is a neutral host, uh, unless there's ways that could change down the line, but it's that the initial plan is for that to be a neutral host. So this is going to be uh, on the Tundra's team. We got Tundra himself, and on Keith's team, we got Babo. Mm. So Tundra versus Babo. Wow. Did not right. see that coming. The first question goes to Tundar. You took this map for yourself. Can you tell us why? And are you trying to make a statement with this game going one? Choose the Actually, one no. for yourself. It was going through the teams. I really wanted to give every team a good chance of winning. 
And despite really wanting to play Kratos for this for this game, I actually felt that with the current setup that I'd gone for, it was actually going to give everyone the best opportunity to find a win if I take the high risk and jump on the 1v1. Um, I know I can perform in a 1v1. Uh, I know it's not my forte. But I felt like, you know, as long as, you know, everyone else can get a victory, then that's, that's, that's worth, a, worth a leader taking on the 1v1, perhaps. And then no one's got any individual pressure on themselves. Absolutely. So, Keith, uh, you chose Babo, who is, uh, he's coming back, trying to get used to 1.03. Is this a vote in confidence in Babo's uh, ability to come back and shake off the rust? Is this why you put him on the one verse one? Absolutely. Um, you know, Babel's a team player, first and foremost, but he um, excels in 1v1s because he um, he's aggressive and he knows how to trade. I think his only rival really is Nisi in 1v1s. Um, I think he can pretty much take down anybody else. Um, we played a 1v1 the other day and he was definitely struggling to just do a couple of things because he was rusty, but... I think versus Tundar. Tundar's Tundar's PP game is a uh, wild card. In my opinion, I think Tundar on, on any given day can be like a 2 out of 10 on PP or an 8 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. It all depends on how he plays. So I think that Babo is consistent enough to where if if he gets Tundar hard and early, I think he's going to come in with a clean sweep for us here. So Tundar, do you have a similar confidence now that you know your opponent is Babo? Oh, well, I've got a hidden confidence. It doesn't matter who my opponent is. I just play the game and I will play to win, which is not my normal go for in a game. But I will be treating this as a tournament. So I hope it gets into the late game. I'm crap at the beginning. Uh, Babo knows that better than anyone, I suppose. But uh, regardless, I'm, I'm enjoying, looking forward to giving Babo a scrap on the map. Great. That's the right attitude to have. All right. We're going to discuss craters next. All right. So, yeah. So both teams actually had their host priority exactly the same, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, um, that's weird. Yeah, both teams put it exactly the same as pressure point first, then walls, then cess, and craters last. Both teams actually discussed craters, and they both don't want to host craters. So I, I'm not sure what everyone's thinking or why you would want craters to be last, but both teams don't want to host craters at all. So unfortunately, uh, for Tundra's team, he gets to host craters. So <laughs> that's just the, the way that the rank choice worked out since you guys both picked the exact same order for hosting. Um, I know uh, Keith's team was a little unhappy about losing pressure point, um, but now they don't have to host craters. So I, I think both teams have some wins and losses with this. So um, as for craters, Tundra's host, and it's uh, Danny and Hardware versus Nisi and Med. You said Danny? Yes, yeah. Resurrection. Resurrection ah, is Danny. Ah, okay. There we go. Now I know. So, both teams were really adamant that they didn't want to host Craters. So I'm going to start with you, Keith, and we'll dig into that a little bit more. Why did... Obviously, I know because I saw, but why did your team really not want to host this map? I think that there's a lot more that green and red can do reactionary to what blue and yellow do. The minute blue decides to do something is when green and red either change their strategy entirely or they continue down the strategy that they had. Um, I just think there's a lot more uh, counterplay for red and green and um, blue and yellow really just have one goal and it's always been that. It's one of the reasons I don't like the new blue and yellow versus green and red because um, blue and yellow just have to double out red usually always and that's how they win the game. But once it goes to the late game, if red can survive, it's pretty much green and red's game every time. So I'm very confident that we're going to do well here. Uh, Sponge's uh, preference was to play this map. He 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 specifically requested to play this map. So um, sticking him on here with Nisi is definitely going to be a confidence boost for his gameplay. And the um, teamwork I think that I'm going to see in my team is going to definitely lead to a win here. And obviously hardware's rusty. This was his favorite map in the in, uh, back in the day, but... Never really seen Resurrection play, but looking at my team versus this team, I think this is going to be an instant win. Well, I like I like the confidence out of you, Keith. So, Tanda, you already mentioned slightly earlier on that you um, wanted to play Craters, and in fact, it was quite a big guess of Keith's team that they were they were absolutely certain that you would you would uh, team up with Hardware to take a win on to try to take a win on Craters. Are you looking at this? Are you now glad that you didn't? 
to sign yourself up for craters or you got it i would have been just as happy um you got to appreciate yes keith whatever everything keith said about the the colors that that team up on craters is absolutely right um but the fact that blue and yellow are much more isolated as a team from themselves it, it makes a lot more food for thought so i still have faith in in these two uh hardware um I, I think since we've got a little bit more time, this might be one of those maps that we would like to gain as much experience before the game goes ahead, especially as we've, we have got the, uh, the, the Nissi card against us on this one. Um, but as for an instant win, well, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that just isn't the case. Good, good. So, yeah, I, I guess, why did you pick Med to ally Nissi, Keith? Of all people that could have fielded on craters. Oh well, I, I mentioned that uh, Med really wanted to play craters, and he said he was most confident playing craters. So I just, I was like, okay, well, if I'm gonna have Nisi on this level, and I, I've got somebody who wants to play this level, um, I'm sticking him on there. Because honestly, craters is one of those maps nowadays where most people do not know how to play it, and they're not good at it. So it's a rare quality to find somebody who wants to play the map and is good at it. So. That definitely led to my decision of choosing uh, Nisi to go with Med, uh, just to really, and that's why I'm so confident. So, inversely, Tanda, was there much talk? Was there much resistance from Danny when it came to being the other person? Obviously, you said Hardware really wanted to play this map, and everyone remembers Hardware as being known for playing this map anyway. Yeah, of um, course. Um, was was yeah, there much I mean, resistance from Danny? I think there was more uh, concern as to whether or not he was best placed on the map initially. So, I mean, we had a little talk and we discussed, you know, alternatives uh, of, of our considerations. And then it was quite, it was, he took it quite well on. Um, he asked for how to play the map in the, in the positions. Unfortunately, we did discuss his position being green. Uh, so we're going to have to go back into talks and renegotiate re a strategy for them. But with Danny, I think, I think he's looking forward to seeing what he can do. And to be honest, uh, I think... He might discover a love for the map after this. We don't know. But he does seem to be quite optimistic about it. And of course, hardware, he's definitely over the moon. <laughs> so that's that's the map-specific questions for me. So do you want to go on to the summary, guys? We got the summary up. Um... Oh, it's blurry. Is it? It's yeah. not on my stream. <laughs> um... Okay, can you can know. you read it, Keith? I mean, I can read it. It just looks blurry. But if nobody else sees blurry, then whatever. We're good. Good. Okay, excellent. So, can we get a prediction of your the team's record, starting with Tundar, and then a little closing statement? Tundar, go ahead. Hang on. Can you repeat that? I said, well, how many wins do you think you're gonna get based on the matchups? And can you have a little closing statement? Ah, uh, sure. Well. Uh, nothing has changed. We're we're aiming for the four uh, four or five wins, um, but um, I'm very impressed with the team that that Keith has managed to put together. I think every match is going to be equally as entertaining and interesting. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to the progression of this tournament. Keith, uh, before before I get into that, Ice, do you have your do you have the predictions on the screen that we sent you as well? Because I wanted to see what Tunder's predictions were. Uh, I can bring them up if you'd like that. Yes, yes. Because you'll see that I was almost perfect. Uh, this is going to be pretty small, unfortunately. Just give okay. me while while right. while he's bringing that up. Um, the the general question that I wanted to ask was, I know I know Tundar feels no fear, but looking at the summary of Tundar and the five maps and seeing how everything's played out, which map are you most confident about? And which map are you most nervous about? You know, you said you're aiming four or five wins. Where, where's the map you think you're gonna drop the drop the win if you? Oh, if Baba is gonna them... smash me for sure. And um, <laughs> Mark and Fabio. Bianca is uh, are going to wipe the floor. So good. I like that confidence. Same question to you, Keith. Which map are you most nervous about, and which one do you think you've absolutely got in the back? Um, I'm most nervous about Pressure Point just because. Um... There's a lot of expectations. Um, me being the team captain, I'm expected to win this match, but Spinifix and Carbine are a force to be reckoned with. But again, Loot Hill and I are very good as a team, and uh, we haven't played much, but we're going to start playing again uh, for sure to start learning and 
playing and practicing. Uh, I think with a couple of games, we'll easily get things um, taken care of before the start of the pressure point game. And I guess the one that I'm most concerned about losing, uh, or, or the one that I think we're going to have in the bag is Craters. Um, I just don't think hardware has what it takes to carry a game versus Nisi and Sponge. Um, Arbum and Jimmy, I think we're going to win on. I just think that the two brothers having the hosting ability, Spyro not being blue, um, and, and them both having one ping versus Spyro and Mammy is just going to be an instant win. Uh, I am most worried about Seth, though. I do, I do have um, my reserves about Spider Pig and Phoenix because I know Spider didn't want to play Seth, but again, I know that they have the shaman skills, they have the basic game knowledge, and really that's all you need to do to pull a win out on Seth. You just get one or two lucky shaman kill lights and then you're in their base killing them and that's game so we're hoping for that and then a clean sweep and that will be our team name team clean sweep good sorry to interrupt that i spat to you oh so two nars prediction if you can't read it i can say it to you uh he thought nissi was going to be at eudrasiel i see that yep and spider pig and jimmy at sass Four walls was loot and a brim, and pressure point was Keith and Phoenix, and craters was Med and Babo. So he actually got everything wrong. Yeah, let's pull up mine. Let's pull up mine. Our yeah. team, our team, our team extensively planned this. We thought about everything. The only thing that really threw us off was Tunder and hardware. We thought Tunder was 100% going to craters with hardware, but everything else we predicted, like Bianca and Marcus. Uh, we thought Resurrection was going to be the one versus one PP. So everything else we we definitely predicted, and I'm pretty happy about that because it means that we we all are on the right mindset, and I think that we've got some synergy if we're all thinking the same thing. All right, excellent. I don't think we have any more questions, so I think we'll conclude the stream. Good luck to both sides, and thanks to everyone for participating and helping organize.